I want to talk about yeah our insights uh, into um, the post-COVID workplaces. And the question is uh, for me a little bit like how long this uh, crisis is going uh, to last. I believe though that this will not be um, a permanent state, but that the world uh, will go back to normal at some point. Um, I think for us, the crisis was mainly um, a catalyst or an accelerator, uh, kind of laying open, I think, certain deficits um, and um, pushing forward certain developments that might have uh, taken um, uh, a lot longer uh, than um, um, we experienced it over the last uh, couple of months. Uh, I'm first of all going to um, tell you, give you a little insight about um, our learnings. So how have we, uh, as a company, um, um, how have we lived through Corona? Uh, then sort of zoom out a little bit, uh, try to explain some uh, larger trends. Um, also some, give you maybe some juice uh, for the discussions uh, later on um, with some hypotheses uh, for future trends. Um, and then last but not least, um, uh, jump on a case, on a case study of ours, uh, Zalando, um, a recently finished project where I'm going to sort of ask the question, uh, what would we do differently uh, today uh, than uh, two years ago? Um, um, is the brief of a future office building going to change? Um, I also talked over the weekend um, to um, uh, our client, Zalando, um, and asked him exactly that question. So if I um, quickly go into the learnings, we as an office, uh, as most of the other offices, um, basically sent everyone into uh, the home office uh, mid of March. Luckily, and this was really um, a coincidence, we rolled out Microsoft Teams just a week uh, in advance. So <laughs> this had nothing to do with Corona but was planned already half a year before. Uh, and this obviously helped us uh, a great deal in um, yeah, uh, making everyone uh, be uh, sort of um, able to work from home, to communicate um, and to uh, be able to also access the data uh, remotely. The um, sort of quarantine time then roughly lasted for about six uh, weeks. Uh, and then in the beginning of May, we slowly started to transition uh, back into the office. Um, the same sort of um, process also happened in the Chinese office, obviously, uh, like a month sort of uh, prior to this, uh, which helped us a lot also, I think, in order to um, uh, gain hope that uh, there is an after Corona uh, and also to learn a little bit now from um, uh, the lessons uh, and the problems uh, learned. So what um, did this whole thing do to us? I think it made, it, it sort of, as I said before, accelerated now our digital uh, communication tools. So from one week to another, uh, we were all sitting uh, in our homes, um, basically being on calls every day. Um, I'm just going to pick out, um, you know, some numbers here of the statistics. So the, the average person at Hen was over those three months, um, 50 hours in, uh, in calls. Uh, that's more um, than, than a week, uh, than, um, just being basically um, on the phone. Uh, and there were obviously like people who were busier talking uh, than others. Um, um, this diagram here showed that <clears throat> there's actually um, certain activities that people said that they could um, do much better from home. Uh, so phone calls, uh, but also the concentrated work. Um, as an architectural office, we're a creative business. So obviously like for uh, collaborative work um, and other things, uh, people are still convinced that it makes sense uh, to, uh, to come to the office. There's only like very few people who want to um, fully transition to a home office, it's only 3%. Um, but it's also the minority who says that they can work better from the office. The majority actually likes to have the freedom uh, to both work from the office um, and uh, to work from home. And this one here was um, a kind of like a different topic, but for me also super interesting to see that um, almost 70% um, of our colleagues said that they could 
eliminate half or more of their business travel. So <clears throat> business travel meaning uh, going from the Munich office to the Berlin office or um, uh, also business travel uh, meaning that uh, yeah, you go out uh, to see a client. So yeah, these were just some snapshots. Obviously, like the survey that we did was was a much bigger one. Uh, we're currently putting that together and presenting it also to our um, uh, office uh, this week in a speaker's corner. Um, if we zoom out and ask ourselves, okay, like what are the um, kind of the, the changes or the measures uh, taking place um, in relation to Corona, you can kind of break them down into three um, sections. Uh, the first one, organizational measures, then design-related measures, and uh, technological measures. Um, some of those are, uh, you know, pretty obvious. Um, so from uh, kind of cleaning policies uh, to um, kind of reorganizing your lunch uh, hours to um, um, organizing teams, you know, at different hours, um, coming to the office or like um, occupying the office or the workspaces. Uh, kind of in shifts, um, but also thinking about uh, group sizes um, and trying to basically uh, limit those to um, smaller sizes, around 20 people. Uh, one thing that we um, experienced is that uh, they started to self-organize now and there was a sense of uh, belonging and also like um, 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 a sense of kind of commitment uh, to look after the other um, and to um, uh, not sort of uh, disappear like in a in a big um, organization. The um, design um, changes are um, um, yeah the, the six uh, foot office. Um, so obviously also we rearranged tables. Uh, most of the offices can't fit the same uh, densities anymore as they used to. We have at the moment roughly a sixty to seventy uh, percent occupancy. Um, there's um, um, kind of um, research going on in regards to um, um, surfaces, materials, how they can be um, more hygienic. The um, air um, change is a huge topic. Uh, we in our building have a pretty old uh, air, condition, <laughs> uh, air conditioning machine. So what we're doing is we're uh, opening uh, windows every now and then, um, especially in the meeting rooms. Uh, to bring in fresh air. Uh, but most importantly, I would say the flexibility and variety of the office space um, to um, be able to adapt to those situations. Uh, for me, it was interesting also this transition phase when people came back from uh, the home office into the office and you didn't really know who, who is physically present and who is still at home. How do we occupy um, the meeting rooms? So they turned into kind of the, the lunch breakout uh, eating areas. Um, so, yeah, how can an office uh, in the future be <clears throat> um, as flexible as possible um, and cater uh, the different um, sort of requirements from the users? And last but not least, and this is maybe a bit more um, kind, of, um, kind of future talk, is how which techno technological um, solutions can contribute to that? How can um, artificial intelligence sort of help us to... Um, move smarter through our workday you know, by uh, basically um, in real time sort of um, um, processing how many people are in the office, uh, distributing densities, um, sort of identifying who is using which uh, meeting rooms uh, for people not to mingle and to mix too much. Um, so I'm convinced that technology um, can be a, a, of a, a big contribution in the future to uh, help deal with that. And you can see, yeah, since a week also in Germany, we have the so-called Corona app. So um, even we are getting there slow, slowly but surely. <laughs> okay, um, and from I think like our, um, let's say, um, internal insights and let's, yeah, these kind of bigger, um, 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 research findings, I would like to um, state some kind of bigger um, hypotheses uh, that uh, talk about uh, the post-COVID workplace, the workplace of the future. Um, we're convinced that working from home will in the future no longer be an exception, but it will be uh, come uh, the rule. Um, the, at the moment, it's um, 
maybe let's say like in some companies one day a week that people um, are allowed to go um, to their homes um, maybe in the future it's the other way around and there's only one day um, in the week uh, when you um, actually come to the office um, this has obviously huge consequences people are more flexible uh, in regards to choosing their um, their, their homes, the places where they live. Um, Twitter, I think they were the most extreme. They basically announced that um, their future uh, workforce will only work from homes. Um, that means uh, that these employees are completely free uh, to live basically anywhere as long as they're in the same uh, time zone. This will make also the, <clears throat> um, the um, offices uh, the rents cheaper um, and also the, the salaries now of someone who lives uh, in the middle of the us is probably cheaper uh, the standard of living than um, in downtown san francisco so work is no longer somewhere you go but it's more um, something you do um, and you can do this basically from anywhere no it's also not just i think the discussion um, revolving around the home versus the office uh, but it's um, you can work um, from an airplane, uh, from a train, or uh, from anywhere. I think one sort of uh, big insight is that offices will move away from being like a place where you go and do your work, like you sit down from nine to five, do your work, and then go home. Uh, it will complete, uh, completely change and uh, into like a um, I, I think a place of encounter, almost like a marketplace now where people come together to um, uh, collaborate, uh, to interact um, and to um, exchange ideas, to run into people also from different disciplines uh, that they uh, maybe did not um, plan a, a meeting with. Um, so um, I think a big change here, um, um, the office offers networked uh, participation uh, instead of uh, instead of isolation and especially for um, I would say like innovation um, intensive um, offices or or enterprises this becomes very very important for them it's not so much um, um, I think the goal to optimize um, sort of productivity but they're really um, geared a lot towards um, um, innovation and new ideas Offices, as a result, become smaller, localized, and more uh, decentralized. Um, so this is something that you can kind of, if you look at the whole world, you could say, okay, like you will start to open more branch offices because uh, post-COVID, uh, it's not so um, such a given anymore that you can easily fly from here to Asia um, or elsewhere. Even within China, we were considering open a South China office because of the travel restrictions. Um, so people or the workplaces will, will move closer to where the people um, live, um, even within uh, one city. This could be um, come a future scenario uh, that workplaces are no longer location centric, um, um, kind of built around one big headquarter, but uh, workplaces are relationship um, oriented and therefore also um, kind of. Um, a representation of certain lifestyles um, and, and communities. And if that's the case, then employees um, might start to um, self-organize themselves uh, in, in groups. I mean, it's also something that we realized when um, we sent people home here. Uh, obviously, like you didn't have control, like what is department A uh, doing and department B. So they started to uh, um, organize themselves um, and this is something that kind of goes beyond uh, the physical space uh, of the office uh, but the office then really becomes a framework only of organizational principles and technologies uh, and sort of like an enabler for um, people um, yeah, to come together uh, in the right moment and to change between uh, the different modes of, of working and, uh, and communicating. And the last hypothesis, I think, is also an interesting one. Um, uh, this one is dealing with uh, the Generation Z. 
um, the basically first fully digital generation, digital natives, they all grew up with mobile devices, uh, social media and these things. And here the hypothesis is that um, for them, since everything else in their life uh, is becoming more fluid, more digital, um, they basically see the office as their physical touchstone. Uh, and it's, it's their only kind of constant, um, so to say, um, also becoming like a social um, um, hotspot. If I look at, and I'm gonna show that in a second, at some of our projects is also not purely about work, but people do um, gather after work for a basketball game, um, or a drink. Um, what I think is another reason for this is that also the younger generation, they still don't have such, uh, let's say, well um, established apartments. Uh, so some of our colleagues were really setting up their workstations um, in their kitchens uh, and kind of suffering from isolation because they were um, and sitting uh, there all by themselves all day long. Uh, and they are the ones who really want to be exposed also to uh, I think the knowledge now of um, also the elder uh, generation in the office. So this for me was, uh, I think actually quite an interesting one. I always thought that the digital natives, they are the first ones to uh, run into this kind of eternal home office state, but they were back in the office here as the first, uh, as the first ones. So the workplace is no longer just the second place. The workplaces are the real world social uh, platform. Cool, last but not least, I'm gonna jump uh, quickly um, uh, uh, at, uh, to look at one of our projects, the Salando headquarter, which was um, opened last year. And we looked at it uh, sort of critically and said, okay, like what, um, what would we do differently uh, post, uh, post Corona? I'm just gonna quickly uh, introduce the project to you. So uh, this one here is the main building. Um, and the headquarter building is actually part of a larger campus. So Salando employs around, I think, eight or 10,000 people here in Berlin. Um, and they have uh, yeah, occupied um, uh, multiple buildings in uh, one area in Friedrichshain. Um, the building, um, kind of the morphology or the structure of the building is <clears throat> unlike the, the typical Berlin block, uh, basically a building that, that turns the, the courtyards inside out and then rotates uh, the grid by 45 degrees to kind of create this, this double X uh, diagonal uh, structure with, um, you know, this kind of central um, atrium, uh, which we declared uh, to become uh, the so-called vertical marketplace. So the client, when we started the competition, he basically asked us not to reinvent the workplace, but to um, sort of um, redefine the way um, from um, you know, the entrance door to your respective workplace. And this is what this building is all about. Um, we uh, looked at it um, uh, quickly before to find out the ratio of designated workplaces in this building as opposed to um, kind of uh, communal functions uh, is roughly 50-50. So compared to other office projects that we're doing, uh, quite extreme. So this one here, a view on the, uh, of the, the main entrance on the ground floor. Um, here you can see on the right side, the auditorium, there's a Kita behind it. Um, um, uh, also like a, a post uh, Stelle here on the left and then a large staircase that takes you up to the second floor. Uh, the big showroom that is housing events, fashion shows. Um, and then uh, you know, further up um, here, almost below the roof, you can always see that the, the vertical atrium kind of extends left and right and offers, um, you know, different, kind of, uh, different kinds of um, informal workplaces. Um, this one here along the balustrade, which is kind of activated uh, and then also more secluded uh, so-called living rooms uh, that uh, kind of look different uh, on every floor. So um, here you can see like in a floor plan very uh, briefly how the building is organized. Uh, as I said, the, the central atrium in the middle. And then we were kind of citing these urban elements. Now you, you can see these streets here uh, for Zalando. Obviously we turned the name of the street into a catwalk that lead you uh, then down into uh, the actual work areas. Here you can see uh, they're actually um, 
marked also on the floor. This was also pre pre Corona, <laughs> so that you don't get lost uh, in the building. Um, and here on the left side, you can see like a typical workspace. Uh, they were always broken down into smaller uh, groups of like something between uh, 20 and 30 people. And those were these kind of boomerangs here were then the actual what we called neighborhoods. So the actual uh, kind of teams um, that uh, were sitting, um, you know, along the facade, um, always with like a meeting kind of um, hub in the center. And um, yeah, um, and here again, maybe some uh, impressions. What was interesting when I, I called um, um, them over the weekend and asked him, okay, like what's currently like your situation? He was saying that they only have 10% of their workforce currently back uh, in their building. So the majority of the buildings um, is still empty uh, and he's expecting them to fill up uh, to 50% by the end of the year. Um, I asked him why is that the case? We're already up to in our office now 60%. Uh, and he was saying is that um, um, yeah, the, it's a, a very young um, uh, crowd uh, who works there and that they are uh, not disciplined uh, enough. Uh, so they are really scared um, of um, yeah, them basically um, um, uh, yeah, getting infected. Um, he was saying also the, the norm until now was that they, um, Zalando, that they would uh, offer um, their team one day per week. Uh, to work from home and he said this might um, basically invert uh, and turn into one day in the office uh, when asked how would you re um, rewrite the brief he said uh, it's he would probably do most of the of the things um, the same way um, except um, probably 20% uh, less uh, space overall no so if more people work from homes um, you don't need um, uh, as much space but the ratio between kind of the collaboration spaces and the concent uh, concentration spaces is something that he thinks works actually pretty well. And also the fact that it's not one big um, <clears throat> open space. They used to um, occupy one um, trading floor here before in Berlin. And he said that that's totally against the trend. Um, and uh, these kind of smaller neighborhoods or units uh, work perfectly uh, sort of to um, separate um, the uh, the, the groups. The main learning, and I think this was one of the most interesting points for me, and this is kind of like maybe my closing a comment to lead over to the, um, uh, to the discussion was, um, he was saying the, um, during the, the Corona weeks now, um, what he noticed is that the groups that he um, worked with, um, you know, most of the times that the connection via Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, um, worked out perfectly uh, in some uh, uh, regards even intensified. I think all of us kind of had the feeling that we were um, on teams or on, on the kind of video calls all day long. So this he said is not so much the problem, but what he said, uh, what got completely lost were the weak ties. So the people that you don't have, you know, a strong connection with. Um, and the weak ties, again, for a company like Zalando, are the crucial fact because they open, um, you know, they open the door to other networks and uh, maybe networks that are, you know, from a different department, a different discipline, uh, and this is what they're interested in. So, um, yeah, with that being said, I, um, I hope I can join the group, uh, now the breakout session that is convinced that the office will not <laughs> die out. <laughs> I'm very convinced that it will remain an important and vibrant place also of identification um, and it will surely change um, um, uh, but I guess yeah um, only to the better and maybe corona was just accelerating a trend that has already been um, kind of underlying uh, before. Thank you very much. And now we'd like to introduce Mikko Taminen from Framery. Mikko, perhaps you have a, a couple of points which you'd like to raise after having heard Martin's uh, keynote. Sure, thank you. And first of all, hello to all. And, and it's nice to get a chance to discuss these things with you. And thanks for Martin 
uh, for the insights. Uh, you made many points that we've been thinking about as well and, and some new insights there as well. So I'm thankful for that. Uh, I will pick up where, where Martin left off and actually started the uh, presentation. So crisis as a catalyst. So that's something that we've been thinking about a lot lately. So what are the things that this crisis is actually uh, the development of which this crisis actually accelerated a lot. And we see uh, many of those kinds of things. And I will repeat some of these uh, points that Martin made and, and we'll have a couple of questions for, for Martin later on. So uh, let's say that not all offices probably will be redone as a result of this situation. So maybe the uh, predictions about the changes made in workspaces a couple of months ago were maybe a little over dramatic. It seems that uh, changes that will be actually made, uh, uh, you know, economic factors and people's desire for things to become more or less how they were before uh, will play a big part in, in the changes that will be actually made. But also in the long term, as is usual, maybe the long term changes will be underestimated in, in a similar way. So. That's something also that we've been thinking about. So maybe all offices won't be redone, but disease control, for example, will definitely be a new consideration or a more important consideration moving forward. So uh, that's that's one thing. And like Martin said, remote working, uh, it's safe to say that there will be a, a dramatic increase, a permanent increase uh, in remote working as well as video conferencing. So. These are things that we've been seeing, and it's it's hard to imagine that moving forward, this wouldn't become more or less permanent. Maybe not to the same degree as we've been seeing them now, but there will be uh, long-lasting changes because uh, people have seen that these are viable solutions to uh, interacting with their colleagues and, and having meetings, uh, especially in place of uh, business traveling abroad. Uh, the first question that I have for Martin is, um, well, it, it starts from our thinking of uh, the need for video conferencing and need for spaces for video conferences, which of course is something that we've been talking with our customers with uh, a lot about. So, and, and also flexibility in relation to that. So using flexible solutions to provide spaces for people to have those video conferences, making sure that those spaces are easily available and accessible for people. So in your opinion, Martin, what does flexibility mean in workspaces now and in the future? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I, I would say in flexibility, uh, maximum flexibility is that you can sort of make the choice within your range of vision and that you don't, uh, that you have the possibility, I think, to break out um, when you have a call coming in uh, or when there's a conference or something set up uh, and not go and talk to um, um, a secretary and kind of um, organize uh, a meeting. I think this is one thing we learned also from the feedback of our team here is that um, if that's the case, then some of those meetings don't even happen because there's too much of a, of a, uh, of a barrier. Um, if we also just kind of refurbished our office, put in um, many more meeting facilities, um, if, um, I would be asked to, to do that again or to rewrite the brief for the office refit, I would probably double the amount um, of meeting rooms and um, yeah, phone booths. Um, we realized that, especially when the people were coming back from their, uh, from their home offices, that still, um, even though you know, two or three people um, um, that participated in a meeting were in the office, there was still always one or two at least whom were connected digitally, so they had to find a space now where they could um, set up a, a video conference. And, and this was just, we were, were just not equipped for that. So um, yeah, at some point we started to uh, just hand out uh, headsets and people would you know, sit on their, uh, on their uh, desks and, and also yeah, just kind of do meetings from there. But yeah, you all know that this is not, uh, not ideal. Uh, it also has a lot to do with, um, I think the behavior of people so uh, I think we're getting more and more used to, um, I think, um, uh, sort of occupying different locations within an office according to the activities now. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's only few people these days that have a full blown two hour phone conversation uh, with a loud voice, but they now know uh, there is a space uh, I can go to and scream at my consultant. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's changing and adapting, um, but definitely a challenge. Yeah, uh, do you see the need for different types of spaces, uh, let's say different sizes of meeting rooms, changing the ratios between different sizes of meeting rooms? Will there be more need for uh, single person spaces, for example, less need for a large conference room than for 10 people having meetings? Definitely. And I think the trend is more towards uh, kind of smaller uh, meeting rooms. We also see that with our clients that the big, big meeting rooms, um, the, just as the one that I sit in now, um, I'm blocking <laughs> I don't know, probably like five, five important meetings now just for you guys. Um, so, uh, but this is also a tendency that we have learned from our clients and from the projects is that uh, the tendency is the meetings are usually three to five people um, mm -hmm. or even smaller. Um, so those big, big, uh, especially, yeah, since many of those attending the meeting are now connected um, uh, online, uh, so you don't, you don't need as large spaces anymore. But it's mm -hmm. important, I think, to, um, to have uh, the variety of different places, also not just size-wise, but in terms of how they are equipped. You know, do you have like whiteboards in there or also um, like if you want to um, do a workshop and actually collaborate and not just kind of meet? Uh, and look at a screen. Um, so different, I think, atmospheres now triggering different behaviors. Yeah, sure. Excuse me, Miko. Uh, um, you have you wrote a paper at the really beginning of the uh, Corona crisis uh, with like um, long, short-term, mid-term, and long-term predictions. Yes. Have you have you seen any changes from the very three your uh, predictions three months ago how has yeah yeah at the, at the moment I would talk about uh, short-term and long-term responses uh, so in the beginning of the crisis with mid-term uh, changes and, and actions and responses I was referring to the situation that employees start returning to the office so that's where we are at the moment and now I would be referring to this situation as the short term uh, situation and, and the response for it uh, as the short-term response. So for now, I'll be talking about, uh, you know, two different scopes when it comes to time, but also, like, uh, I would still uh, say that uh, there will be a change between the short-term and the long-term. So let's say, that, uh, let's say that we return to the office um, people will be eager to come back, uh, do many things that were, they weren't able to do before. So there will be some kind of a rebound effect, I would ex expect. So I think it would take some time after the return to the office for things to really go back to normal. And then the long-term changes will become evident even uh, sometime after that. And some of the changes that have been now uh, started and accelerated, like Martin said, uh, they will probably be evident uh, longer down the down the road. So maybe these three, you know, timelines or, or points in time are is, is still a useful way to consider things. But uh, before, uh, with the midterm changes, I was referring to the return to the office, and that's really uh, what is being discussed at the moment and what the focus is placed on at the moment. And uh, Martin, you you mentioned that uh, you are reconsidering having your so China office maybe going to the South China to make it easier or uh, easier. Um, have you seen so changes between countries? Or is, or is this a global issue for all the offices you have and all the people you met? Uh, well, I think it's a global issue now. I mean, as we realize now, um, traveling is not as easy as it used to be. Um, but in China, it's quite extreme, the, the measures that they took um, for all the traveling. Um, so after they lifted the quarantine, uh, it was only certain uh, provinces that, um, you know, could fly from A to B. Beijing was very restricted. So our people at some point said we just have to leave because um, we have client meetings and um, they expect us to show up. So they basically left Beijing and flew to Shenzhen, Shanghai and wherever um, at the risk of being sort of uh, quarantined you now uh, in different spots. Then the next problem was getting back to uh, Beijing. Um, this was also not um, as easy. Then, you know, there was a, um, a phase where um, um, these, um, all of these restrictions were lifted, but now 
uh, with uh, the um, kind of current uh, outbreak last week, um, everything, there's no flights going in and out anymore. Uh, and this has now been, uh, I'd say, yeah, uh, three to four months. So it's really starting to affect us. I mean, also China is a very big country. Uh, flying from uh, Beijing to uh, Shenzhen is like flying from here uh, to the uh, south of Italy. Um, so this is definitely something, what I meant with the, the de decentralization trend, you know, potentially in the future is that we will not be, um, you know, all centered around one big headquarter, but maybe we um, have more local spots in order to be more uh, adaptive you know, and more, more sort of agile. I think it's great. We're already in the middle of a discussion. <laughs> so before we split up into the groups, maybe is there anybody from our audience who has a question right now? Because then I think we just leave it here and then we split up. Is there any question from the audience? Just talk. And you know, if you press the, yeah, what's the name for Lea Taster, David? <laughs> Spacebar. <laughs> if you press the space bar, then you can just talk and you don't have to switch on your microphone. And, uh, yeah. I'm actually on an iPad, so I don't have a space bar, but don't worry. Yeah. I'm actually in. <laughs> uh, and uh, yes, last week I had a very funny guy who is of a leading architect practice doing hospitals. And he moved to the office for the first time. And he said, Dominic, you know, uh, I went back home because I was all alone in the office. And then I said, oh, I feel sorry for you. Uh, then you are again uh, distracted by kids and wife. No, he said, I'm divorced. Oh, yeah. Okay, so he is continuously alone. And I feel sorry with him because you guys as designers, you probably need your home office to be much, much bigger than a sales manager. And uh, okay, you need big tables, you need place, you need light, you need meters, uh, I, I think uh, you need to incorporate that in your design for your office. Very different to, to sales managers like me who are used to have a desk where there is the day before somebody else on. But um, okay, uh, I, uh, I, I'm actually engaged with quite a few uh, constructions in Qatar. And if there is one place much more fast than in London or in New York or Belgium, I'm not, I haven't been in Germany now, eh? but uh, if there is one place where the whole thing is completely turned upside down, eh? it is in Qatar because they are already digging, they are already building their buildings and they need to be ready by November 2022. And all that design is gonna be redone. Eh? And I am in the middle of it. The entrance halls are to be changed. The reception areas are to be changed. They will be more remote. It's actually unbelievable how big those changes are. And these guys have no time to waste. They need to do it tomorrow or next week. But two weeks too late is just no longer possible. Anyway, um, um, I, I just get into that meeting here because I'm like a little bit of a guy in the company uh, consulting very much on home, home offices and, and I enjoy that meeting here. So uh, I believe uh, home offices are here to stay in a big way, but they will be far more efficient and indeed they will take their place over. Thank and you very I, much. So maybe when then we just split up as time is running. So uh, it would be important to know who wants to join. We want to have two groups. One group for, yeah, office will stay with us or offices will die no sorry Femi. No? <laughs> sorry to interrupt now this time we have two groups but the same questions so both groups will discuss if the office is going to die or if the office is just changing in a way we're going to work together so we are very curious in which group we're gonna end up it's just so we can talk a little bit how do you say more together and not in this huge group? So, okay, Anita, I'm preparing that. You can continue talking, Anais. <laughs> Perhaps just a, a little um, advice for everyone else. Um, we all know it's sometimes a little, yeah, some people don't particularly like um, speaking out, getting in front of the camera. 
Uh, but, but we're really here to try and help each other. And that's the main aim of Architects Know How sessions. So we really hope that you can give us your opinion on that question. You know, what are your concerns um, for the future? Um, what, what, not just as, as an, an architect, uh, as an employee, as a person. Um, so please do speak out and, and let us know what you think. And if there's another person in the group that doesn't agree, then let us know what, why you don't agree. And, and if you have any solutions for the problems that are coming up within that discussion. Or are the others not back yet? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess they were discussing and they want to go, they want, they don't want to come back. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Everybody's coming so, back. We're all on our way back, but it was such a great discussion. It was really, um, really I will let, it's great seeing people coming back. Um, first thing I would like to say is, um, I guess Sabrina, you were running in one of your pods as well as Nico. In which city are you, Sabrina? right now i'm sending lovely greetings from munich at the moment can you go outside the pool the port with a laptop yes <laughs> oops oh, with our tv sorry and okay but that's purely a one person pod, especially in times of COVID-19, is that correct? That is correct. And yes. if you want to see our bigger meeting room, I'm going to take you to our double queue, which you can see right now. Oops. I know where that place is. <laughs> where is it? I've been there. It's yeah. in Munich, in Sendling. Come, come visit me some, sometime. <laughs> you mean all, so of, this is, you mean all this of us? You're inviting all of us, right? Yeah, everybody come visit me at Designer Werk Show in Munich. This is our double queue lounge model, which is actually perfect for smaller team meetings, doing creative exchange, like uh, design thinking, scrum techniques, Kanban, and so on. I hope, I hope you can all see it well. Yeah. It looks... Very okay. good. And certainly, I think um, a, a solution which will be much needed in the coming months, years. Um, we only have a few minutes left. Uh, what I'd love to ask both Martin and Miko um, is perhaps they can give a short summary of, of their discussion round. I know in mine it was a very interesting discussion and there were some really nice ideas and, and thoughts. So. Perhaps we'll start with Miko from your side. Yeah, I think the thing that I'm most curious about is, is the, the readiness uh, of the well, real estate and uh, furniture and, uh, and the industry in general uh, to react to this situation and also companies' uh, willingness to go through the changes needed. And that's also a, a final question that I have for all of you and also, also Martin, I think. In particular is that where do you see uh, the change overall in the industry when it comes to open plan offices, uh, activity based office, uh, flexibility, where do you see us being in that change in Germany in particular and how do you see uh, this current situation affecting the change that has been going on for some time now and will the direction of that cha change change now or will it become something else or will it continue more quickly? Uh, what will happen to that that has been going on for some time now? Yeah, maybe I, I jump in here. I mean, as I said before, I think um, the uh, change will be accelerated now. And uh, I mean, that's what most of our clients have understood is that the, um, the open plan office now as such doesn't really have a future, but you need to, um, I think, offer these days um, a variety you know, of places to um, collaborate uh, in smaller uh, and in larger numbers, but also places to, um, uh, to concentrate. You know? um, and yeah, um, COVID-19, I think, is only um, uh, speeding up uh, that process. So I think uh, this is a trend that has been um, out there and that will, be, uh, that will continue. Maybe um, a quick summary from, 
from our group, uh, the I think the death of the office, um, none of us um, really uh, agreed with. Uh, we all agreed that the role of the office will probably change uh, to um, a place of collaboration, social interaction, uh, and also a place of identification. Uh, one, uh, I think, in interesting discussion uh, revolved around also sort of uh, coincidental encounters, no? that um, we, I think, managed to somehow survive those three months of Corona because most of the, the communication uh, was with people who we met in person beforehand. No? But what will happen to the people who we never met uh, physically? Uh, it's quite, I think, difficult to build up a similar um, kind of relationship and level of intimacy uh, with those. So uh, that combined, I think, with a more uh, f flexible understanding of working remotely, not necessarily just your home, but this could be from anywhere. Um, and I think a completely changing pattern also on our traveling um, uh, activities. Um, so that's maybe a short wrap up from, uh, from our group. Yeah, certainly. And I think, Mikko, we can also, that was, that was also the, the, the overall feeling in our group as well, that feeling that, you know, the, the workspaces need to be easily uh, reassigned, so flexible, um, also the issue of um, sustainability and less travel, um, but also on the flip side, whereas um, I think, I'm not sure who mentioned this, it may have been Rainer or Benjamin, um, but they mentioned, you know, whereas one may have traveled to Vienna, for one meeting, now they're doing eight meetings in one day. So then comes the question of also work-life balance, which was so important in the past. How do we now um, incorporate wellness into the future workplace as well? So it was a wonderful discussion. I want to thank uh, certainly uh, Martin and Miko for, for their expertise, for taking the time out of their busy schedules to be with us. Um, just a, one quick point. We asked during the registration um, if you would be happy for us to exchange uh, contact details amongst one another. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another reason for this event. It's not just, or for this format, it's not just about um, knowledge exchange but it's also about personal exchange and 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 building up networks so um we have that list of people and thank you for agreeing to that if you feel like yes you would like to and you didn't um agree to that just let us know in the chat function or send us a quick email um yeah thank you so much our next events uh the next one next week is on monday with uh, Axel Koshani and uh, Kloisberg talking about the yeah, modular construction. Um, is it the killer of creativity? Uh, and then <laughs> going to the week after where we have Jan um, Knicker from MDRDB talking about the densification of cities and how do we um, yeah, look at using space more efficiently and that with also another Scandinavian company, Aritco. So thank you to Mikko from Framery, Martin Hen from Hen. Thank you. And, uh, we thank look you forward to welcome you all soon.